Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're reviewing Silverstone's Tundra TD02 Closed Loop Liquid Cooling Solution. This is a CPU cooler and it is using liquid of course, so this is a bit different from other CLCs we've reviewed because the Corsair H series coolers and NZXT X series coolers are all supplied by Ace Tech, so they're very similar in their make and design and engineering because it's literally the same parts, just rebadged, and there's some software on top of it. So this doesn't use Ace Tech, and it does have custom design elements from Silverstone, so it, it is a, a bit more interesting to review in that respect. Most noteworthy is the radiator itself. The radiator is super fat. It's like 45 millimeters or something. It's, it's almost twice as fat as the standard Ace Tech supplied radiators we see in these coolers. It is a 240 millimeter uh, CLC, so that means we have two 120 millimeter fans, and the radiator itself is actually a, about 280 millimeters long, so pretty standard in terms of 240 uh, millimeter designs for CLCs. We have a normal pair of hoses going down to the CPU block. The CPU block is actually pretty fat as well. It is a bit fatter than normally as the radiator is, and that is because Silverstone has ditched the plastic that's found in a lot of these CPU blocks. So they're using a unibody aluminum design and, and it's got the mounting mechanism with screws uh, at the bottom. If we flip it over, we'll see that the cold plate also lacks screws. This is a common theme uh, in this cooler, as you'll see. It lacks screws in the bottom, which theoretically this improves the thermal conductivity a little bit, or I should say the thermal dissipation because we have more surface area to spread the heat across uh, because it's not being interrupted by screws. In actuality, the CPU is never going to touch those screws anyway on any of these other coolers, so I think the practical difference is pretty minimal. The radiator is also screwless, if you were wondering, and it's all held together by a uh, an aluminum shell on the outside, so pretty nice looking on the whole. If you're wondering why the radiator is so fat, uh, and if you're not familiar with radiators, they work basically just by running a liquid pipe from one side of the radiator to the other, where the, uh, the hoses will basically import and export the fluid and the pump on top of the CPU pumps it. So that's how they work at a top level. The fins, the aluminum fins are normally found between the liquid pipes, the, the actual pipes in the radiator. Um, and those are used to conduct heat from the pipe, from the metal pipe, which then uh, obviously is blown away by the fan. So that's what cools down our liquid. That is our cooling process. And in this radiator, the liquid pipes are actually surrounded by aluminum fins. So instead of just left and right side, it's actually top and bottom as well. Once again, theoretically improving the thermal dissipation potential. Speaking to the installation process, I was very happy with Silverstone's installation for the Tundra TD-02. It's super straightforward. You put your backplate on, uh, you mount the radiator, you mount the fans, and you basically drop the CPU block on top of the CPU with some thermal paste and you screw it down. No stupid mechanisms or brackets that slide around everywhere involved. So a very nice move away from some of the less functional mounting processes for these Ace Tech coolers. However, the radiator is so big that a lot of cases that are built with special compartments for 240 millimeter radiators in them will not support the Silverstone TD-02 as is the case with the Phantom cases and the top compartment because it's just too big, it doesn't fit in there. So you're gonna have to hand it down into the case in a lot of these situations. And that does mean you're gonna be removing probably your rear exhaust fan in order to accommodate the radiator hanging down, depending on your case. If you have a huge case, it should be fine. So not a big deal, but uh, is something that is worthy of note. As far as the benchmark performances, First of all, nothing beats the Antec 1250 yet. It is still the king of our benchmark. Next is the Corsair H110, then the uh, the 1250 again in a custom setting, and then the Corsair H90 is tied with the Tundra TD-02 that we're testing today. So the H90 is a 140 millimeter cooler, and the TD-02 is a 240 millimeter cooler. If you're wondering why the H90 was tied, it's because I wanted to do a real world test. So the H90 can fit in our test bench in just the rear position or just the top position and that means we have room for other cooling fans in the case. The TD-02 is big so I had to remove the rear exhaust fan. I obviously had to remove the top fans in order to actually fit the cooler uh, and so that meant we had one less fan running during the test. Now you might say hey that's not fair it's not an equalized test but I do draw some lines and one of my lines that I draw is 
ensuring a real world scenario in the real world you as a user will not be getting rid of one of your fans in the case randomly just because you want to you're going to leave it in there and you're going to install your h90 in a different open slot so that's what i tested for these are tied in that scenario if you're just running the cooler on a bench with no other fans, the TD-02 should slightly outperform the H90. It should be better than the custom setting for the 1250 and, a, and a, about tied with the H110. So it'll be kind of in, in between those two if you test it flat out with no other fans in the case. So end all be all, it's a good cooler. It does what it's supposed to do. It installs extremely well. I was very happy with the installation. Build quality is solid. The aluminum is very nice. The lack of screws is kind of a, it's a cool thing. It's more of an aesthetic thing. So it all, it all looks very good and it performs fairly well. The cooler is $120. So it is the same price as Antex 1250, which makes it difficult for me to recommend because the 1250 has significantly better uh, software control and you, you have a bit more control of it as the user. However, the Silverstone one does have a different aesthetic, and honestly, that's what a lot of this comes down to once your past build quality is aesthetic. So kind of pick between them based on what you think looks better and if you care about those extra two-ish degrees Celsius. And that's all for this cooler, so uh, leave a comment below if you have questions. Check out the link in the description below for the full article. Please subscribe if you like the video and support us by checking out our Patreon page, also linked below. And we will see you all next time. Peace.